All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the fifth session of the Avenger game. Uh, I only have one announcement, and that is next week, the weekend of Easter, uh, we will be taking off. So these guys will be back on the 28th after this session. So uh, other than that, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this two-parter episode. Uh, I don't have a specific captain's log or any log like that, uh, but I will say that we're going to catch... Uh, the captain up in character. So for everyone who was here last session, uh, it's been about maybe about a week, five, seven days, uh, and you've towed the uh, the Piak, the Vulcan Science Academy vessel. Uh, you've towed it back to Vulcan, and the uh, Vulcan Science Academy is pouring over the vessel. Uh, by now, the captain has returned from whatever his business was on Vulcan, and as promised, we're going to start in the captain's ready room. As the acting captain of the time, Mr. Rollins, uh, you are briefing the captain on what the hell is going on. So, as you can see, based on the report, sir, uh, we responded to a mayday from the Vulcan science ship. Uh, simple, what should have been a simple uh, tow mission. Uh, the ship had weapons and we had to disable them. Uh, but you, once you were towing a vessel that still had active weapons, no, sir. We went to go to the ship, and as soon as we arrived at the ship, it started shooting at us, and so we destroyed the weapons or disabled the weapons, and uh, then we were able to tow the ship. Our uh, our guest Helix. Um, was activated off of uh, Moose's suggestion to contact the ship, and she was able to overcome the basic AI system that was running the ship. Interesting. And from the reports, it seems my ship got a little dinged up. Everything's all repaired, sir. It's just like, well... Obviously, it's better than new since when we got it, <laughs> it was pretty messed up. So you're telling me it has a different paint job is basically what you're reporting. Absolutely, sir. It looks mm. great for you. Uh, would also like to give props to uh, Ensign Morse. Um, you know, again, he did just amazing work on the con. Well, I guess that's what he, quote unquote, gets paid for. So I'm glad he lived up to his training. Absolutely, sir. Excellent. Glad to see my ship's intact. Of course, it's a good ship. Good crew. Sounds like I missed out some interesting times. Yes, sir. It was very unfortunate that we could not get a hold of you before we uh, had to embark on that mission. Well, we'll say my Vulcan vacation was always interesting. Excellent. Um, and has, uh, has Jensen been doing her therapy with the Vulcan? Uh, yes, she has. Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, let me know. The therapy sessions have been continuing, and uh, the crew was able to take some shore leave. Excellent. That's good to hear. I plan on making them uh, do several drills after uh, during our next mission transition. Speaking of uh, mission transitions, uh, Voss, you kind of look to your right and you see that there is a, an incoming communique for you from uh, Vulcan itself. Mm, maybe this is my Vulcan vacation. I mean, uh, I go ahead and activate the screen. Mm -hmm. So appearing on the screen is a uh, Vulcan Admiral, and he says, uh, Captain Voss, uh, Starfleet has a mission for you. Interesting. I'm ready to receive the transmission or the mission briefing. 
Uh, first, let me ask you, Captain, uh, have you been briefed by your acting captain about the situation that uh, involved our academy vessel? Yes, Admiral. Seems interesting that you have an AI that defended or that automatically defended your ship. What happened to the crew? Uh, that is actually what we are having you look into. Uh, as part of the exploration of the vessel, we have identified a set of coordinates that may lead us to find our missing crew, as well as whoever may be responsible for installing weapons and the AI in the first place. You have my interest. Very good, Captain. I'm sending coordinates now. Uh, you are to proceed there at maximum warp and do whatever you can to recover our missing crew. If you have any questions, you may contact me directly at the following frequency. And, you know, he sends over a frequency. Uh, other than that, Captain, I believe the human expression is Godspeed. And before you can get another, you know, another word in, uh, the Vulcan Admiral shuts off communications. What the hell? Ah, uh, talking of as always. Uh, I look at the the brief or the coordinates. How far are they? Uh, they are approximately a week's travel away from Vulcan into unexplored space at maximum warp. Like, like. Humans have never been there unexplored, or Vulcans or humans haven't been there unexplored? Both. Oh. Well, this should be entertaining. Um, do I have any reports as to the nearest... Um, like, scouting mission was the nearest thing that's been contacted... It. Uh, uh, the closest thing would be a long-range survey probe that came within uh, five light years of the coordinates, but as far as the probe was able to tell, it was just empty space. Okay. Then I had contact the bridge through communications and inform our helmsman to lay course and uh, get underway. All right. I think he stepped away for a moment, but yeah, he's able to punch that in, no problem. Sweet. Good to feel that deck moving underneath me again. Sure, are we able to verify the message? Verify mm -hmm. that it was an admiral? Well, and that it came from Starfleet. I mean, we have encountered some AI trying to lay traps for us. Interesting. Uh, I would think, I guess I would verify that there is a validation encryption underneath the transmission. Yeah, uh, let's, because you guys could use some momentum, let's, uh, let's have you do an insight and command, uh, difficulty zero. Insight and command, difficulty zero. Here we go. You want to just give him some threat? And... No, I'm just insight kidding. And... Okay. okay, insight in command. And I see. Very nice. You get two momentum. And yeah, sure enough, uh, you are able to verify that it is a valid Starfleet encryption code and that the Admiral's signature, as it were, is indeed valid. Sweet. Just check it. Well, I'll... Is there hey. anything else you need, Captain? No, Mr. Rollins. It seems that uh, you executed your first command excellently. Thank you, sir. If you need anything else, obviously, let me know. Very well, Mr. Rollins. You are dismissed. All right. So up next, uh, we cut to engineering, where uh, not only is uh, Helix on duty with Mr. Moose, but uh, Jensen is, unless someone has told her otherwise, Jensen is uh, back on duty. Uh, and Moose, uh, you know, you were given the order to uh, get the engine prepared for a long burst of maximum warp, so the engine is humming along as it should. 
when all of a sudden uh, you hear a spanner drop, uh, you know, a clatter to the floor, and Jensen curses. And the next thing you know, uh, gravity has cut off in engineering. Jensen? Uh, sorry, sorry, sir. Uh, hold on. And yeah, before you get too far off the floor, gravity comes back. Thank you. I, I apologize, sir. It's a little bit testy. Uh, Vulcan, uh, the, the Vulcan psychologist that's working with me, is tries my patience. <laughs> well, that's his job. He's going to test you, make sure that you can take anything he tosses at you, and that you don't snap and make him, you know, turn inside out. Well, uh, I only hope that I don't end up doing so inadvertently. Well, I don't think about turning him inside out. Focus on control. And Helix dryly comments from, you know, somewhere off to the side. I've observed, but by telling a biologic not to think of something, that's all they end up thinking about. So well done, Mr. Moose. Hey, Jensen? It, y yes, yes, sir? Can you think of Helix having a nicer personality? Jensen looks over at Helix. I, I, I don't know if that's possible, sir. Try. And Helix says, I am perfectly pleasant, thank you very much. <laughs> it is you biologics that do not understand humor. Uh, Moose will uh, come out from underneath the warp core. He's been working on it. But change in appearance. Um, still the same boots in the pants, uh, but now he has what looks to be a uh, Trek version of a tool belt. Okay. Uh, he has all of the tools that uh, do not cost him any, you know, uh, need momentum spend since he's an engineer. An engineer. Mm -hmm. um, that's all attached magnetically to the belt. And he is sporting a shirt now instead of the top half of the coveralls because he keeps ripping them. Mm, fair. And, and he uh, just looks at uh, both of them and goes like, Hey, Lex, have we gotten the message back yet from uh, Fleet Yards? Regarding what exactly? Uh, the reports I sent in for the different alien equipment we're trying to integrate and also my uh, questionnaire about... Uh, some programs. Well, if you will recall, I have not been allowed, save two instances, to connect with the main computer, so your guess is as good as mine. However, I am happy to report that I have finished my analysis of the AI that was on the Vulcan Academy ship. Oh, well, go ahead. Well, it has been my observation that, uh, you biologics tend to say the same things over and over, so perhaps I should say this to the senior staff in a meeting, perhaps? Very well. And, Helix, you don't need to directly interface with the computer to access anything. You have fingers. And he's just going to start poking a console like, like this. My understanding was that I was not allowed to interface with the computer in any form. As far as I understand, you're not allowed to interface directly, and as in your program going through it. Well, go over the fine details in this meeting, I guess. Have you ever heard the joke about a programmer who's told if there's ten eggs to get ten gallons of milk? Like, yes. Do yeah, agree. it's kind of like that. Mm. Jensen? Uh, y yes, sir. You got the engineering room. Don't uh, break anything. Ah, uh, yes, sir. He just grins and like, come on, he looks. Let's go. So, uh, back up onto the bridge. Uh, you guys will arrive in a moment, but because somebody made a supporting character, uh, we're going to introduce that supporting character. So, stepping off uh, the turbo lift is uh, one Master Chief Petty Officer. Uh, <laughs> He steps over to you, no. Captain, and says, Captain, I am here to report that security is completely ready for any boarding action. And yes, his name is Master Chief Petty Officer Arnold. That is his name. Oh, so Did happy. I approve this transfer? Oh, he's been here the entire time. Oh, okay. 
I've been trying to keep him away from you, Captain. <laughs> Jets are up, Morris is upside down. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Arnold does sort of give you a pad, Captain, and says, I need your approval. God. <sighs> <sighs> what does the pad say? Uh, the pad is basically authorizing uh, some Mako equipment coming aboard. Um, it's already been brought aboard, but this is sort of the paperwork, uh, you know, catch up. Um so you, you would have a few particle rifles, um, you would have uh, Mako quote-unquote armor, which actually, strangely enough, they is something Modifius has statted, and Mako armor is like two resistance, so it's, it's actually pretty paid powerful. Nice. Okay. Oh good, the requisition went through. I give my little thumb of approval on the on the uh, scanner while I. Uh, what race is this particular character? Oh, he's Vulcan. <laughs> oh God! Oh, I'm so oh, happy. My with my brain. Phone. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad so somebody happy. is. Oh. Hey, okay. Oh. God, I... Okay. Um. <clears throat> Thank you, Master Chief. I will, uh... I don't even know what to say to this dude. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um. Thank you, Master Chief. And I will go back to looking forward without trying to snicker too much at his appearance. <laughs> Captain, is there something wrong? <laughs> no, Master Chief. I, I think it's something I ate. It had too much helium in it or something. Ah, you should make sure it's not the tumor. <laughs> As before he can take off, I want I want Moose to show up. Yeah, on it's about now that Moose and Helix like, show up on the bridge, you know. Oh, God. Moose is just going to look at him. Size him up. Uh, he is strangely. What is your fitness security combined? Uh, let me go take a look. It is a. Well, that's the wrong spot. Uh, fifteen. Ah, then you are of similar physique. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna do this because it looks like they're gonna look at each other now. There, there we go. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, you poor guys! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there is there is an immediate connection and understanding and respect as you look at one another. You are men of culture. Oh, but yeah, like, uh, uh, unless you arm. stop Arnold, I, he's oh, he's I'm, gonna step into the turbo lift. <laughs> I'm gonna extend my arm out for him. He he does the manly bicep handshake with you. I just nod. You know, it's like, look forward to working with you. Of course, Moose. <laughs> and then he steps into the oh. turbo lift and vanishes. At and least you don't look like Carl Weathers. <laughs> 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 and uh, Helix kind of looks between Moose and the captain and everybody else on the bridge and dryly observes, I have no idea what is wrong with any of you. It's a organic thing. Yes, so I'm gathering. Captain? I hate to admit this, but uh, I agree with the AI. Uh. Yes, Moose. Oh, uh, he likes has some information she would like to share. We'd like to have a little meeting about the uh, AI on the Vulcan ship. Very well. Let's go ahead and. Uh... Uh, we'll go to the back of the back of the bridge while the ship's on autopilot and have this little group discussion. Right. Even though we really all can't fit back there. Well, I will remind you, you do have an actual conference room. 
Yeah, but I'm one of those guys that don't really trust automatic stuff without some supervision, so... Fair. Well, I mean, we have ensigns here. Petty officers. Yeah, I mean, it's also something that, you know, if you step away, some red shirt, or well, I guess yellow shirt in this case, uh, some yellow shirt would uh, come by and, you know, take up your duty station. Mm. Mm. I mean, but you can have it here. It's just really where you want to have yeah. it. No, we can do it right here. It's fine. Yeah. Alright, so, uh, you know, you all step over. And yeah, uh, Helix uh, starts off by saying, uh, Well, I have good news and bad news. I have observed that you biologics prefer the good news before the bad news. Sure. I have been able to come up with a name for the mysterious aliens. Uh, They call themselves the Vol. uh, Add a character, V-O-L. There's not much data about the Vol themselves, but I was able to suss out a plan uh, that was enacted for this AI. Essentially, the Piak, the Vulcan Science Academy vessel, was to lure out other vessels, as you were intimately familiar with, in the guise of a distress signal. Their task was to then disable the responding vessel and tow them to where a quote-unquote mothership waits. There, the biologics, and I say that because it is quite literally what the AI was referring to them, not because I like saying it, Uh, There, the biologics would be processed, and the vessel be repaired and upgraded. I can hazard a guess as to what any of that means, but that's essentially what I've been able to find out. Okay. Uh, I mean, can we just pay him to upgrade the ship? Kidding. Helix kind of looks over at you. I believe that was an attempt at humor, and if it was, I suggest reading Comedy 101 again. What? If you did hazard a guess, what would processed mean? And I shudder kind of thinking about it. Hmm, well... I have run approximately 3,000 different scenarios uh, that are likely. The most, shall we say, gruesome of them is some form of turning them into some sort of paste. Uh, There is upgrading them as well, or possibly uh, otherwise consuming them. Morris stifles a gag reflex. So, like a vole trap? Yes, I suppose that is an adequate descriptor. So, we are then traveling towards the mothership, we think? I have not been able to interface with the computer, as per the captain's directions... But I would hazard a guess that if we're heading anywhere and you were given coordinates, it's very likely that we're headed to where we should be. Okay. Then, any suggestions from my staff as to how to handle the situation the best? Well, I... I'd imagine when we leave war, we'd want to be shields up, ready to go. Anything you can think of that'll help us defend ourselves better against this particular threat? So, Moose, uh, you would have gotten a report by now. Uh, I'd like you to roll me an Insight Engineering, please. Uh, Difficulty 2. You do have two momentum at the moment. Do you have any focus that would apply? 
Uh, do you have anything related to weapon systems, shields, or uh, perhaps uh, energy management? EPS. EPS. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, let's, I'll let EPS apply here. Cool. And you guys okay if I use one more random? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to say this succeeds at cost, but I'm taking two threat for it. All right. So, Moose, uh, what you're able to determine is the following. And I'm actually going to try something new. Uh, I'm just going to message you on Discord what your report says, and you can tell the others what it says in your own words. Huh. So is this a report that has been approved for him to read? For pretty much everyone to read, so you can disseminate at your discretion. Alright. Well, Captain? Yes? Read the report here. It looks like uh, technology and augmentation of the ship is a significant jump in technology. Uh... Starfleet is actively taking this and putting it into uh, R&D black hole, essentially. You might be seeing it popping up on ships at a later time, but for now, most of this is classified. Okay. It looks like there's... Some similarities with other species we've come, in, uh, come across, such as the Klingons, but it's just similar, not exactly a duplication. Helix? Yes? Based on our technology and the computer systems you've interfaced with from our ship, and the AI aboard the Vulcan vessel, how different would you say they are in terms of advancements their computer systems are either rudimentary or they did not put their best ai on the piak i would say it would be rather trivial for me to get aboard their vessel and take it over uh, if i was allowed to do so uh, that comes into the second part of this meeting uh, I'd like for Helix to have more access to the systems, uh, even if it's just accessing the computer through a station, such as how we access it, typing and such. I have no problem with him manually interfacing with it. I just don't want his AI to be able to imprint into our computers. Helix has shown that uh, they're able to access our systems and not leave an imprint. I believe the imprint on Betty and initially was an attempt just to anchor so we couldn't just delete the program. A form of self-preservation of an intelligence. I would also second a recommendation that uh, Helix's performance has been admirable and very very helpful uh, in much the same way that we have to decide how we want to operate with Jensen we have the same question with Helix here as well yes <clears throat> I'm still not comfortable with allowing an AI that we do not understand how it was created at our level of technology to interface with a computers, our computers. It just makes me uncomfortable. Helix, mm -hmm. uh, Helix kind of tilts her head to the side and says, well, if you wanted the quote-unquote easy option, again, I could attempt to take over their computers from the inside, but... It would involve uh, interfacing in a great capacity with the computer on this vessel.
Is their technology more advanced than yours? Again, unless they did not put their best. I believe their computer systems are easily for me to compromise. However, as the illustrious, I believe is the proper human expression, the illustrious moose here has told you, their weapon systems are more advanced than yours, which could be a problem based on this ship's limited weaponry. Uh, honestly, looking at the readouts from the report from Starfleet, if we take enough hits, we're <laughs> we might as well just go back to space dock and uh, be back in another year. Amount of damage something like that can do in a few shots, even with the Andorian shields. Going back to polarized hull plating, it's not gonna be pretty. Is there a way we could mask one of our shuttle pods to approach it more stealthily? Uh, Moose is going to look to Rollins and just kind of grin. He's like, uh, Galundan Core? The shuttle drops. Do you remember how we did that? Uh, yes, but we don't know what their sensors are like. Well, that's true, but he looks at the captain and was like, Basically, we reinforced the hell of the shuttle, and it became a drop pod. Smashed hard to the ground, we had EVA suits. Even if we had a breach to the hull, we could still get back into orbit. Dangerous as hell, but... Uh, tactic. Well, I think were you just wanting to get closer to the ship without them noticing us, so that we could do some remote ECM, or...? No, I have no problem with Helix going aboard their vessel and trying to take over to a point. Hopefully that doesn't bite us in our butt. I just have a concern with our systems being uh, interfacing with our systems. I don't I don't want to sound naive here. Um, I think we're probably right that whatever did this means us hostile intent, but we don't know that for sure. There could be... Uh, if this is a completely mechanical species, maybe they don't recognize us the way that we understand life. Um, I don't know how likely that is, but it's not something we've considered yet. Well, they could be seeing us nothing more than like we used to see cows on planet Earth as food. Or as parts. Uh, the Ensign does, of course, have a point that... I mean, we are meant to explore and we <clears throat> have a mission of peace. I'm all for the peace, but... That ship was trapped. It was meant to take out any other ship that got close, and then probably signal like, hey, we got another bite. Why? Well, we have a week to figure out what we want to do. Uh, the best part of an ambush, right? Knowing an ambush is being able to reverse it. Hopefully we can come up with a plan. That actually gives me an idea. Um, rather than us going to the mothership what if we find a place to lure them so that we can meet them on our terms we find i can look into the star charts see if there's any location that would benefit us versus them i don't know if we know enough to make that determination but if it was a trap and we can lure them back out that seems i don't know is there something there well I mean, Helix had said that the Vulcan ship was supposed to disable us. What Was the Vulcan ship then going to take us, you said, take us to the mothership? Yeah, that's correct, yes. <laughs> mm. I will say that your plan, Ensign, Morris, or would you prefer I called you Jim? Uh, Ensign's fine. Very well, Ensign. I believe your plan has merit, but 
it has the very same problem with me doing remote ECM. I would need greater access to your computer in order to transmit a signal that the mothership could potentially take as its own bait. I'm fine with it. Captain? To be fair, she can tap into our systems at any time. Increase the grab plating on every deck until we're paced. She has had multiple opportunities to, to do that. She didn't even have to let us know that she was aware. I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. I would concur. I mean, the security options are either no access or all access, really. Fine. And, you know, Helix does look to you, Captain, and says, so you are granting me access, then? Yeah. We can all... We always take... We can all take the risk of dying. Just remember. Yeah, never mind. Go ahead. No, please. I'm curious what you were going to say. Nothing of importance, it seems. And he looks, you know, again, tilts the head to the side. Are you not the captain? Yeah. Then I would think anything you have to say is important. I'm just not a big computer guy. Why well, I'm in space. Slightly ironic, as most starships these days uh, quite rely heavily on their computer systems. I think he's trying to say he doesn't trust artificial intelligence. Most <laughs> ships are computerized to have a varying degree to accommodate for spatial travel. Ah, that would make more sense. He just looks at the captain like, is, is that right? That's what I'm hoping is right. Better words than what I have. I'm not a big talker. Well, you're a real good looker, that's for sure. That's what the ladies tell me. <laughs> Captain, I believe it is my duty to inform you that my readings of Moose's biosignatures indicates that he was being sarcastic. That's okay. I still take it as a compliment. You biologics are strange. Very well, uh... I shall see what I can do. Uh, Mr. Morris, if you could please uh, find the coordinates you wish me to try and lure the mothership to. I will prepare a subroutine to transmit that signal uh, whenever you all are ready. I think, uh, Rollins, you would be the best one to help me find a tactically sound location. Absolutely. We can work on that together. Uh, Captain, I would like permission to do an experiment. What would be the experiment? Jumpstart computer core. If our computer core gets compromised, I want Betty to take over. I'm going to need to tie her into the systems, though. <sighs> She's sound. More computer stuff. Well, She's not an artificial intelligence. That's for sure. Closest, I would say, is a virtual intelligence. She's designed to have the ability to expand upon the default parameters given to her. If you tell her that you can only have an option of one, two, and three, she will find a fourth. Very well. Thank you. We will just look at that helix and uh, give her two big thumbs up. Alright, well, unless there's anything else, uh, I think that's a good point to end the meeting, uh, because it is at that point that, uh, what's his name, uh, Mr. Soros is reporting that there is an incoming communique from Starfleet Command on Earth. Very well, put it through. Alright, 
So, uh, you know, as you guys shuffle back to your seats, uh, you know, Captain, on screen you will see a... Uh, actually, instead of a uh, an actual admiral, because as far as I know, Archer was uh, not promoted to admiral, or was he? Um, I think he... I think he had Commodore first, and then he had Admiral. Okay. Well, whatever rank Archer is supposed to be, it is indeed the one and only uh, Captain Jonathan Archer, or Commodore uh, Jonathan Archer, on screen. Commodore, good to see you again. Yes, I thought I'd check in with an old acquaintance and see how things were doing. We're doing good, sir. Things are changing. Things are progressing. I think uh, I think we can do great things out here. Oh. Uh, there was a uh, another reason for my call, as much as I hate to cut pleasantry short. Uh, Starfleet uh, Brass back here really wants a look at that AI of yours. Uh, is there any chance of you swinging by Earth in the near future? Uh... Uh, I only have orders right now for this uh, for this uh, mission. After that, possibility, sir. Very well. Uh, of course, you know I I'm not a very good computers guy myself. But uh, what uh, what discussions I've been in, they have more or less decided that your AI is quote unquote a piece of equipment and thus is worth study. Understood, sir. I will uh, duly inform those involved about uh, Starfleet's requests. Excellent, Captain. Oh, and next time you're uh, out my way, let's uh, let's get a drink together, catch up. You know, I'm always in, down for alcohol, sir. Hmm. Indeed, Archer out. Oh, that's interesting. Is Helix still on the bridge? No. No, Helix and Moose uh, would have left during that conversation. Good. Good. Yeah, Sir, let's see who's on the bridge with me. With okay. all due respect, I... Yes. find it hard to call her a piece of equipment. Hmm. I'm not a lawyer, so I follow my orders until somebody tells me otherwise. Well, our our last conversation with Starfleet gave us the right to kind of make a decision on that, right? On whether we were going to grant her asylum or not. Did they ever... Just on a side note, did they ever come back with a response to my message on that? Uh, they pretty much said that, you know, as captain of your vessel, you have operational authority on the matter. Okay. And I think the key distinction to make is that the request that Archer just gave you is indeed that, a request. It's not an order. Uh, my character would not, would still see see this helix as a tech techie so okay mm -hmm. i'm going to uh that was rollins that said that right correct mr rollins i am going to have a discussion with a, a, f a few people but as far as i'm concerned i'm gonna probably f Poking at Starfleet unless I don't have unless I don't find a other reason why. Um, Captain, uh, having overheard that communication, it reminded me of something I didn't want to share during our last meeting, but um, I can't help shake the idea that it's possible that Helix and whatever AI or mechanical life form we're up against. Yeah, that they might be related to each other. Um, given that, you know, I guess the use of AI on the Vulcan ship and the fact that she herself is one, um, obviously nothing's conclusive, but... 
I have. I thought it was my concerns. duty to at least express that concern, Captain. No, I'm with you, Mr. Morris. I, I am very timid about any form of AI. Um, having them being related even in in a subordinate or lower form to compared to a higher form still concerns me. So I'm glad you shared your thought. And I'm I'm of a similar mind. Uh well uh Lieutenant Rollins, uh would you like to begin mapping out a possible ambush site? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, to begin mapping this out, we're just going to do a very basic extended task, and I'll type it out as I say it. So the work track is just going to be an 8. Uh, the magnitude here will be a 3. The difficulty will be a 3 as well. And uh, no resistance on this. So uh, that is your current extended task. Uh, the default task for this, and of course you can... Uh, pitch your own ideas, but I'm thinking a reason and a con, uh, assisted by the ship's sensors and con. All right, I think I can lead the task here. That would be for me a thirteen with my uh, technical expertise reroll. You said reason con, correct? Okay. And then I assume you could assist me with some kind of, like, something security check? Yeah, I would say his would be a reason security. Or, like, a control, because we're trying to control the situation. Nah, nah, scanning and uh, analyzing is usually reason, unfortunately. Okay. Survival, is it? Nah, nah, I would say survival does not apply here. Um... Do you guys mind if I buy one die? It, it'll turn on untapped potential to get some... I think it'll get us a lot more momentum afterwards, is my thought. I'm cool with it. Alright, I'll spend one momentum for a third die. Oh, there it goes. Uh, Astro navigation is a focus. Mm-hmm. Shipboard tactical system? I will re-roll one of those dice. Yeah, because I need to see at least one success or no one can assist you. Okay, so yeah, now the ship can roll as can Rollins. Who's got the ship? I think you do. Oh, okay. And it's rolling... Uh, it's rolling sensors and con. And my mouse just died as I hovered over it. Nice. Look it right in. All right for a charge cable. Always has a focus. Okay, so uh, your first attempt... Uh, you know, you're you're looking at uh, you know the the data that you're able to get on long range scans and comparing it to what little's in the database, and so far you're you're not detecting anything. Now the benefit of this is that you essentially have seven attempts at this uh, in all before you arrive at the other coordinates. So we'll say that this task uh, takes the better part of a day. Ah. I just remembered my untapped potential, so we do get two momentum. Okay. So that works even if you don't succeed on the task? It, I think it fires as long as I have spent a... Oh, no, you have to succeed. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I think you have to succeed on that, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you guys are certainly able to try again. Uh, you know, it just takes more time. Yeah. I, I have no reason to give up. Yeah, I mean, we have, you know, like a week to try to find the perfect spot. Mm-hmm. All right, so same rolls. Um, now, to turn that on still requires that we buy a die. Are we cool with maybe adding one threat here? It'll, no. it'll generate us a lot of momentum if we... We got time. We got time. 
Okay. I mean, really, we're just trying to get ourselves an advantage, right? I mean, that's essentially what this is, is uh, whether or not you guys are able to find somewhere that would give you the jump on the mothership, somewhere that would make it easier for you to hit them, but harder for them to hit you. You know, something, you know, an advantage, as you said. All right. So if the ship rolls a success here, that that will uh, let you start working on the work track. Fence is con. Yep. Hey, look at that. You actually get a momentum. All right. So, Mr. Morris, if you could roll me a six challenge die, please. Untap potential first? No, No, I have to. Buy a die. Yeah. Uh, But Uh, the good news. uh, Yeah, it's five work, which means the magnitude goes down to a two, as does the difficulty. And yeah, uh, you're able to. Uh, begin narrowing down uh, what appear to be these pockets of stray gaseous material. They're not quite nebulas. Uh, They're just clouds of uh, interstellar gas that might have been ejected from a star at some point or otherwise uh, left over from a nebula. But yeah, you're you're starting to narrow down on this. Uh, So if you want to try again, this would be day three. Yeah, and I do want to spend this momentum because I think we'd lose it in the scene change anyway. Mm-hmm. But I think it will help us get it more. Yeah. All right, so all right. you already have two successes, which is all you need. But go ahead and let's get the assists in. And I think I'm going to re-roll one of my dice with technical expertise. Okay. But I'll wait for the ship. Okay, I do mine. And we explode. All right, so that's a grand total of five successes, which means you get three momentum. And yeah, go ahead and roll me another six challenge that, please. Well, one first for untapped potential. Okay. All right, nothing. So six challenge dice. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, You actually find, uh, quite literally, before you just blow past it at maximum warp, there is a rather dense pocket of... uh, shall we say hydrogen and helium that would allow you to hide within the nebula or at least to any sensors that you're aware of. And I should say it's a micro nebula, not like a big nebula. Also be pretty good for our ram scoops. Get some more deuterium. Micro as in only a couple million, not a couple trillion. Uh, I would say maybe, like, a few kilometers. Like, it's super tiny. Mm. Well, this looks good, Ensign. No, you you pointed out the parameters we needed. Yeah, we might just want to um, double-check with Helix to make sure that it won't interfere with with what she has in mind. All right, so, uh, you know, during the days you all were working on that, uh, we go back to engineering. And, you know, I mean, there's the occasional uh, quote-unquote outburst from Jensen where, you know, someone has to shout at her to knock it off. But other than that, uh, she seems to be performing her duties admirably. Uh, Helix has taken, almost taken over a portion of engineering over here to the left uh, where she has specifically configured a interface uh and you know without even asking enabled wireless functionality so that she can be interfaced with the computer literally with a thought um but as this is all happening moose uh you did get a communication from talar okay i'll uh read it okay uh you know it's you know standard from talar it's expressing her well wishes for you uh hoping everything is all right uh, you know, saying what she's up to these days, you know, standard sort of crushy, lovey dovey stuff for a Vulcan. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll start doing a little, a little draft it, but I'll save it so I can finish it on personal time. Okay. Um, had, uh, has any of the other messages come through, though, from um, the Fleet Yard? Uh, no, at this point, the Fleet Yard has been annoyingly quiet. 
I'm just gonna send them a priority message telling them that they need to get back to me about uh, a few of the programs I talked to them about. All right. So uh, I'll say, you know, you wait about half a day and you do get a reply back and you, when you go over to the computer screen, you see a very tired looking lieutenant uh, and he says, my name is uh, Lieutenant Johnson. Uh, what can I do for you, uh, Mr. Moose? I didn't think I was going to get a communication. I was just going to wait for a text message, but I sent you guys schematics, diagrams, and plans for new augmentations for the... <laughs> Cobble pot of a mess you guys put the ship into. Try and proceed with our own designs and also software information on some programs. Sounds like you're doing what a chief engineer should, adapting and overcoming what's thrown at you. Uh, correct me if I'm being terse, or apologies if I'm being terse, but I still am not understanding what it is you need from the shipyards. I can't access certain information about these programs, and I have clearance to read these files. But I have been stu nothing's on board the ship, and I can't access it without authorization from the shipyards. Hmm. Seems like an oversight to me, but very well. I'm transmitting you a set of clearance codes that should enable you to look at whatever you're interested in. Yeah, thank you. You um get some rest. We here at the shipyards, we don't really sleep. Oh, I know. Uh, I was part of the detail that helped refit the Avenger. Hmm. Then I would think you are more uniquely qualified than I to really handle any situation you have out there. Well, unless there's anything else, uh, this is Shipyard out. Have a good one. Then yeah, screen goes dark. Uh, excellent. I'm going to look at this information now. All right. Um, also, I'm going to see how Jensen's holding up. Uh, you've noticed that uh, she's been more withdrawn than usual. Uh, probably related to the fact that, you know, you... Well, you're not a Betazoid or anything, but I think you, even you could read in her body language that uh, she's very unsure of herself. Uh, she doesn't really know how to interact with others. Uh, it's something where it, it almost startles her when someone actually calls her name and asks her to do something kind of a thing. Jensen. Uh, y yes, sir. The relief crew is going to be shoving in five minutes. I want you to lock down your station, get ready to go for a uh, half shift. Meet me in uh, the mess hall. Uh, of, of course, sir. Just like look at her and then give her a big smile, and uh, go over his pads more. Um, during the three days, though, how has uh, his progress with uh, making sure connections to the main computer core and Betty have been working? I mean, it's fairly trivial for you to set up. It just means that the moment you make that connection, uh, it's going to be rather difficult to you know remove the connection without there being problems. All right. So I want to set up a failsafe. Um, okay. The connection kicks in the moment the computer core starts doing anything out of its pr uh, predetermined uh, design and function, which Moose will have parameters set up. So if it starts going against commands, uh, it will immediately be severed, and Betty takes control. Okay. Yeah, that's simple enough. But yeah, uh, anything else you would like to do during those uh, three days? Uh... If no, one ha if no one else has anything to do, I wouldn't mind having like a little scene with Jensen. Alright, sure. Then I'm assuming you want it in the mess hall? Yeah. All right, well, if no one else has anything to do. We'll go to Theater of the Mind. Not in those three days, yeah. Go to Theater of the Mind. So, yeah, Moose, That's a long know. lunch. Yeah, it's a very long lunch. We are government employees. Yeah. You know, you make it a working lunch. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, Moose, uh, you and uh, you and Jensen uh, actually seem to catch uh, the mess hall in one of its, uh, you know, not as traffic times. Uh, and you more or less have the run of the place to yourselves. He's going he's gonna to sit down at the table with uh, 
big old steak, mashed potatoes, some sweet potatoes, chicken leg, a bunch of greens, a cup of water. All right. Uh, Jensen just gets what appears to be a chicken salad. So, how are you finding working again? It is uh, comforting to once again be able to actually do something other than stare at a Vulcan. Yeah, they're not all that bad to stare at. It's... I don't know, sir, it's... I'm, I'm sort of questioning a lot of things right now. I don't know if it's proper for me to stay or if I should go back to Vulcan for sure. Or if, you know, what's to stop me from causing more problems during my sleep? Or There's, there's just a lot of questions. Well, one question I can really ask you is, where do you feel like being? I mean, I kind of like being here. Yeah. And be here until, for as long as you're happy with it. But That's... let's say, for sake of argument, sir, let, let's say you're injured and, you, you know, there's nothing the doctor can do to save you. Is it okay for me to try and save you? I've made my peace with the aspect of dying a few years ago. I did something stupid. And prideful, and almost paid for it. But I pushed through, and I was able to save the lives of others. If I didn't do it, the Avenger would have drifted back into Federation space with a bunch of bodies. So, do whatever you think you can. Mm. She kind of picks at her salad, mulling that over. You have new abilities, you know, it's going to take use to gain use to them. But I'm more impressed, though, by you. As someone as young as you, is your fact that you're not losing yourself to it. You're not playing God. You're not indulging in your new abilities. Trying to understand them and control them. That is tremendous strength. More than I have physically. I don't know what I would do if I was in your position and found out I could make things appear with my mind. Granted, the Romulan War would have ended a lot quicker and a lot more differently. Please. I mean, I, I would be lying, sir, if I said I didn't think about doing those things, but I don't know. I just don't really feel the need to. And that is why you're a good person. Thank you, sir. I want you to do one thing for me, though. Name it. Stop messing with the gravity. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing my best, sir, but apparently that uh, is, as Mr. Delkov would say, that is my stress trigger, so... Well, stick with the program. That's all I can say. I'm not going to give you an order. Stick with the program is my advice. And do what makes you happy. Of course, sir. Now, are you going to eat real food, or is that all you're going to eat there? Because that looks... Even looking at your salad makes me hungry for more food. I, I mean, unless I quote-unquote cheat, this is how I keep my figure. Oh, look at my food, and look at me. I just work well. You have powers now that can just make you... Look, no, you're not using it. Okay, let's eat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. that's, that's the scene yeah so yeah uh we'll say you know with uh, everybody's tasks uh done we cut back to the bridge and yeah uh it's just up to you guys uh where you want to uh take a position uh if you want to do anything before sending out the uh quote-unquote trap code you know things of that nature so we set ourselves up in this little nebula. Mm hmm. Mm. How's our. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Morris, how is our sensors beyond the nebula? 
sensors are operating at expected efficiencies, sir. Good. That's what I like to hear. Are we able to detect this ship at uh, this range? I would say no, you are not detecting uh, any ships at the moment. Okay. Yeah, we're still four days away from it. Mm hmm. Well, well, three days, but yeah. I I don't have anything before we set sent the code. Anybody else? Uh no, nothing while we have a current mission. Captain. Yes. If it is at all possible, I would like to look over the logs we collected during the encounter with the Vulcan ship to maybe see if there was a language that the program was using and I could design a algorithm to translate. I'd be willing to give that a give that a go. Drogs will just do the little typical Vulcan head bow and start working on their computers. Okay. Now it's going to be difficult because they didn't really transmit anything. Uh, the only really transmission were the ones that Helix made. Um, but you could certainly try to start working on it all the same. Yeah, with her help, like look over the program, how everything was coded. Um, what the message would have been if it had sent out one, go from there. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is going to be a scene change then. Uh, as you bring Helix up to the bridge to send the signal. And, uh, you know, Helix takes up uh, one of the stations here in the back and just kind of looks to you, Captain, and says, I'm ready to transmit on your orders, sir. Very well. Transmit. All right. So, uh, if someone would like to roll for Helix, that way it's not me who does it. Uh, Helix is going to be rolling uh, in a open hailing frequencies task, which I will have for you in a moment. Do, 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 do. Uh, so, the hailing frequencies open is a control engineering for Helix, and the ship will assist with a communications engineering. Uh, the difficulty here will be a 2 because you are deliberately trying to mask your signal as something else. Do you roll or...? Yeah, why don't you do Helix and then someone else do the ship? Okay. Okay. I'll, get the, I'll get the ship. What was the roll on the ship? Ship is communications and engineering. Uh, do we want to... Ooh, nice captain. A uh, momentum? Sure. I should have waited to roll that. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and then, I'm um, computer... Uh, yeah, Helix focus. has a focus. Very nice, so you get two momentum. And yeah, uh, the signal goes out, and Helix says, well... It's transmitted. All we can do now is sort of sit and wait. <laughs> so we sit and wait. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> so you sit and wait. Uh, you know, you, you do obviously take your shifts, but it's the better part of two days before uh, something appears on your sensors. Uh, it is a very large ship uh, when uh, you start to look at the sensors, uh, sensor readings. Uh, it is, if I had to put it in game terms, a scale 5. Uh, so it is almost about 700 meters long. Uh, it's a very thin ship, though. Uh, its profile suggests that it is similar to almost a cone that has been elongated with these stubby sort of quote-unquote wings that support the main engines. And the engines are almost like jet engines. They're just big old cylinders. And the overall exterior of the ship... Uh, does not look to be very uniform. Uh, it seems to be jagged in places, almost a mishmash of hull parts and technology and things of that nature. Um, so I'm going to put you on this screen so you can see what it looks like token-wise. Um, 
but uh, where is it? There it is. But uh, I think that's a, a good enough descriptor for those of you who are listening in, hopefully. Uh, oh. But distinctually, it's not the Borg. It's just a very junk heap type ship. Conehead with a jet engine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, uh, you are able to tell uh, when this ship drops out of warp and begins scanning the area that it does not detect you, or at least make signs that it has detected you yet. Hmm. Well, then. Shall I scan the vessel, sir? If we scan the vessel, we definitely know we're going to be here. Is Helix on the bridge? I don't remember. Yeah, Helix is on the bridge. Okay. Helix, do you think you would be able to transmit them to receive before they... Uh, before we do anything else, I would need to be closer to them, or them for, or for them to get closer. Uh, game mechanic wise, her limit is medium range. Okay. Um, but uh, once I get aboard, sir, I can start trying to take over their systems. Again, sort of an out of character thing. So the way this is going to work is her task to basically do ECM is going to be a signals jamming task. And that's going to be a control engineering assisted by the ship's communications and engineering. Uh, it is a target within medium range. And the difficulty is going to be based on the target's computer score. So it's a little bit different than, you know, standard signals jamming. Um, however, I will say that uh, if I recall correctly, the uh, Avenger does have an ECM talent, does it not? I believe we do. Excellent. So what I'll say then is that with the ECM talent, uh, that she is able to roll at a decreased difficulty. So, you know, it basically knocks down one difficulty kind of a thing. Okay. And I'll also say that once she successfully gets aboard with her program, what'll happen is every single round, not every turn, every single round, I will roll one challenge die. Uh, and if I roll an effect, she takes over the computer. So, for example, uh, let's say round one, she gets over. I roll a challenge die. It doesn't turn up an effect. Uh, round two, I roll two challenge die. Still no effects. Round three, three challenge die, etc., etc., until she rolls an effect. All right. I like the reverse warp core bridge. Mm-hmm. Well, we should probably strike quickly and sh before before they get a shot off. I mean, should we hail them? <laughs> um, we can attempt it, but if they go defensive, it's going to take a lot. Of, it's going to be a lot harder to get into the ship with transmission. Okay. Well, or we can maybe launch a probe and maybe they'll move towards the probe and come a little bit closer. Ooh, I like that. Can we shoot a probe backwards, GM? Yeah, you can certainly do that. Sure. We can also use the probe as a relay to communicate with them. If you want to try and mask our signature being in this nebula. Let's let's shoot uh, let's fire the fire the probe backwards, see if we can get it to get coming closer. So that so, they're within median range, and then we have more choices to go with. Okay. Assuming since we've been here for three days, could that probe already have been out there as like part of our plan? Yeah, sure. I'll I'll say you could retroactively do that. Oh, cool. I've kind of laid some stealth probes. So yeah, my question is, with the probe uh, outside of the nebula somewhere, uh, what are you choosing to do with it? 
uh, let's go ahead and activate it and drive it away from behind us. Let's see if we can get it to get the the mothership to either follow it or see if it shoots it to try to get an intention of its overall stature. Okay. Uh, I'm going to roll for the uh, the vol here. Ooh, okay. So with that many successes, uh, it does start to move towards the probe. But after a moment, uh, you would notice, uh, Mr. Morris, that uh, it is indeed uh, shifting its focus from the probe to the nebula, and it is doing a more intense, a deeper scan. Nope, it's on to us, sir. Okay, let's oh. go ahead and activate shields and attempt. Let's go ahead and communicate with it. All right, so this will be your one action before we actually enter into combat. <laughs> uh, okay. So I guess the question is, what are you saying as uh, as you open hailing frequencies? Uh, Vol Mothership, this is the USS Avenger. Please state your intentions. Their intentions are rather evident as, Morris, you detect their charging weapons. Captain, they are charging weapons. I knew we should have shot first. I'm feeling hand today. Okay. All right. So, uh, just going to get you all into turn orders here. All right. So, uh, I'm going to say that your action, uh, you know, you did open hail and nothing happened, so it is your turn again. Um, but I will say you cannot quick to action this first turn because otherwise you would be getting three actions back to back. Okay. Yeah, uh, are we medium range yet? Uh, no, you are still at long range. If you want, I can get us into medium and like do some kind of attack or evasive pattern. Yeah, yeah definitely let's, wanna. Let's go evasive and try to get the try to get the Helix's AI on as soon as possible. All right, uh, I think I can um, thruster us within close range without spending power. Is that right? Uh, you can move anywhere within medium range without spending power. Yes. All right, so. Let's do that, and that's a, still a task, though. I can generate some momentum. Yep, it's a control and con, and the ship is assisting with engines con, and it's a difficulty zero. All right, so that's three successes, which means you're already capped on momentum. Um, I actually have a use for the bonus momentum here, so let's get the ship to roll. Yeah, so if someone could do engines con for the ship, please. Right. Engines con. Come on, come on. All right, one more success. So you have one floating momentum at the moment. All right, I'm going to use that one and one regular momentum to do a second action, which will be evasive maneuvers. Okay. So I'll do that now. And I would like to buy one die, so I'll have three. Okay. Is uh, that as far see. as you're moving the Avenger? Uh, yeah, I think we... Um, we wanted medium range, right? That's medium? Yep, that's medium. Okay. Uh, so yes, and then I'll do my daring contest. We, against the, the Vulcan ship, they seem to do less well the closer we got, or? Uh, yeah, it looks like the closer you got, the harder it was for them. Alright, so... Oh. Mm. 
That is, is that... a difficulty of one. So, oh, the ship is also assisting with a structure con. So if someone can get structure con for the ship. Yep, structure con. Okay, so you actually are back up at full momentum for this. And you and, do lose one power, unfortunately. Right, because... and then I'm going to roll... Oh, wait, 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 that's we're at full momentum already? Uh, yes, you are at full momentum. Okay, then I won't bother with the um, evasive action, or my untapped potential then. Uh, I think you still have to roll it, because it could oh. get me threat. Um, Do I have to roll it? If it says may, then you're fine, but if it says you must, then you're, you know... Uh, all right, I'll roll it. Just... All right, so hey, you have two floating momentum. Uh, can I create an advantage with that? Mm, depends on the advantage. What do you have in mind? Um. Well, we're still in the nebula, mm -hmm. so... Gathering effect, the uh, nebula's energy is causing a harder lock on. Or the enemy ship. Even more evasive. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've got like glancing impact already, so like we're getting extra resistance. Um, Could that create an advantage for us so that evasive maneuvers didn't affect our um, difficulty of attacks? Sure, I'll allow that. Uh, just remember that uh, if you open fire, uh, it does sort of end evasive, or at least as far as I'm aware. I, it hadn't before, is that... Eh, let me re really no, appreciate it. Just, it. Uh, normally just increases the difficulty. Okay, no, it's until the flight controller's next turn. Okay. So yeah, it's it. Uh, you would be until Morris's next turn. You would have this benefit. Yeah, this is kind of our standard advantage that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's going to be your guys's turn. Uh, so the uh, Vol Mother ship uh, is uh, going to attempt to hit you with its weapons um, as you're, you know, flying about in evasive pattern Omega. Uh, so I do need to know what is the difficulty to hit you at the moment? Is it a three or is it a four? Um, it's just one more than whatever your standard would be. Okay, so they are at medium range, so for them, uh, it would be a, a difficulty two plus one, so that's a difficulty three. Um, and glancing impact means you have how much resistance? Five. Okay. Uh, is that including, didn't we give, uh, the Avenger improved hull integrity? We did. Okay. Oh, so six. All right. We've been doing that wrong. My bad. Uh, so, in that case, I'm going to spend some threat here so that they roll an additional dice, and let's see what happens. Well, uh, with them rolling a 20 on their additional dice, uh, they still hit you, but there is a complication. Uh, so let's see the good news. Oh, maybe not so good news. Uh, 5, 6, 7... Okay, that's seven damage with their disruptor banks. And how many zeros is that? That's four zeros. Uh, I'm going to spend uh, one threat to re-roll those four zeros. Okay, uh, so that's an additional six damage. So before resistance, it's 12. Uh, you have six resistance, five resistance. Six. I, okay. I had forgotten that we had improved hull integrity. Okay, in that case, you're going to be taking uh, six damage to your shields. And, uh, you know, the good news is that they do lose a little bit more power than they should. But you do take at least one breach here. So, let's see what your breach is to. Your breach is to structure, which, you know, uh, it means I now have to roll a challenge die. And if I roll an effect, one of you is injured. One of you uh -huh. is injured, lethally. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to go by uh, what's in Discord Overlay. Uh, for number two, I'm going to say that number two is going to be a supporting character. 
Uh, so let's uh, let's roll one d five and see what turns up. Uh, number four, Moose. Uh, you're in engineering, and uh, you know the attack as it strikes the Avenger shields. Uh, you feel the ship buckle around you, and uh, a panel next have... to you explodes in a shower of sparks, and you are lethally injured. Meaning that if you are not healed by the end of the scene, uh, you're dead. Um, can I use a determination not to be lethally? Uh, so there's a few ways you can do this. Uh, you could spend, uh, two momentum to avoid the injury. Um, right. but, and I'm going to double check this. I think the problem is, is that if you take another injury, uh, you're in trouble. But again, let me just double check. Uh, you may avoid injury as normal, as you would normally be allowed to. So yes, you could avoid this injury by giving me two momentum, and you would be fine. But you cannot avoid injury again. Okay. Yeah, two momentum for our chief engineer. E. Can I say that, uh... On account of me knowing how the ship is, I actually... It was Jensen that was in the way, and I just pulled her around. Mm-hmm. Hit myself. Sure. Then you know, uh, <laughs> maybe you know uh, the effect of pulling Jensen away and maybe reduces it subconsciously. Uh, what would have been an injury, uh, you weather no problem. Just looking back, like, yep. Why do we have rocks on this ship? <laughs> <laughs> They're standard in every console. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's now your guys' turn again. Rollins, do you still have quick to action? Wait, I, I can't. I mean, it's the first round, and since we had already gotten two actions, he said I couldn't use it. Well, you couldn't use it then to get three actions. You could use it now to get two actions. Okay. So, what do we want to do? He yeah, like and, and shoot. <laughs> Uh, or thinking, regain shields, or yeah, is it a minor action to? Can I like? Can I do recover that allows me to avoid a gain? Uh you could do recover. Yes, that's standard. That's a standard, right? I believe it is a standard. Yes, and it's a standard to restore shields too. Mm hmm. All right. Um, you if you guys spend, have... you can spend two momentum to take two actions. Just the other is more difficult. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let's have Helix do her thing first, and then if you guys are okay, I can do recover shields, and then two momentum to recover myself, so I can avoid another injury. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, in that case, what's going to happen is uh, Helix is going to be rolling me a signals jamming task, and so Helix is going to be rolling a control and engineering and the ship will assist with communications and security uh the power requirement is one so you will lose one power for this and the difficulty here is a base of three however i'm going to spend some threat to make it a difficulty four do we want to buy one or two dice for helix Uh, is any of it reason, did you say? Uh, control engineering, so she's got a 13. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do the dice for her. Three or four. Ooh, what do you guys think? I mean, if she doesn't succeed, we're screwed, right? Yeah. Captain, what do you think? Captain? Oh my god, they killed the captain! Crap. Alright. Boss? Yes? Two or three momentum uh, for Helix's task. We have two. four momentum? Two? What? Okay. What, wait. What does two momentum do? Yeah, oh wait. Say it's uh, I'm sorry. You meant two. You mean one or two dice, right? Yes. Yes. 
two dice. Okay. So four total applicable focus. Mm hmm. Okay, so the good news is uh, before the ship even rolls, you succeed. But yeah, someone can get me uh, communications and security for the ship, please. Communications. Nice, you get a momentum. And yeah, Helix is uh, able to get aboard the mothership, or at least her program is anyway. And that means at the end of this round, I will roll a challenge die. Uh, but that is your one action. Are you quick to actioning to do something else? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I think, Moose, you were going to attempt to recover shields and then recover yourself, yes? Yes. Okay. So, uh, to regenerate shields, it is a power requirement of one. Uh, so I believe you are down three power overall, which means you have uh, three power remaining at the moment after regenerating shields. Um, this is a control engineering, difficulty one. And if someone can get the ship's structure engineering. All right. Uh, EPS as a focus? Uh, I would say possibly. shields would be a focus, not EPS. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, so that means you get uh, two momentum, which means immediately you restore two shield, and it's two more shield for every one momentum spent. And I believe you're at four at the moment. Uh, okay, so two, and then we do two more momentum, so that gives us um, six shields we could regain if you want us, if we uh, use the two momentum we just gained. I, I mean, yeah, we just probably just want to leave one for whatever the next task because I'm going to be using these two to do a recovery test so the two we gained do you guys want to use that to recover six shields yes I'll make the command decision alright so you're back up to full shields and then I'm going to use a two momentum to do a other start action okay recover uh, All right, test. so uh, Recover is a uh, difficulty three, because you are swift tasking. Uh, the difficulty three, Fitness and Command. I am using Determination uh, okay. to get two successes. Okay. And what value are you calling into play? Uh, do, do, uh, Not on my other leg? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was, thank you for that one uh, I want to do no one messes with my family and my ship um, so I need to still be upstanding during this fight okay sure go for it and uh, uh, my Mako training would that help come into as a focus uh, sure, because it, it would have related to, you know, recovering in combat sort of a thing. All right. And there's determination, which is part of that, so that's four. Four successes, which means you get a momentum. And yes, you regain your ability to uh, avoid an injury. Yay. All right. So, uh, with you guys having taken your turn, uh, we go back to the Vol mothership, and the Vol are going to spend some threat because they are now going to attempt to fire a torpedo at you. So they're rolling in a rather high difficulty, but uh, let's see what happens. Okay, uh, so they did not get enough successes, which is good for you guys, uh, because that would have been a very bad hit for you. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, it is now your guys' turn again. Oh, uh, the effect dice? Or helix? No, no, it's not. It's the end of the round, not... Oh, yeah, it's the end of the round. I'm oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, so you guys have one more action you guys can take. So it can either be a tactical or a command, or you can repeat uh, another uh, system, but it would be at an increased difficulty. I mean, I'm always happy to shoot. 
if we take it, we take it over and shut it down. Yeah, we want to keep it intact. Uh, so I mean, we could try to gain some power. Yeah, so we yeah, have let's the go uh, engineering power. Yeah, we have the uh, talent for that there, which is expanded connectivity. Mm-hmm. All right, so. Uh, it does mean that someone else besides Moose has to do that task. Yeah. Uh, mm. Do we want Anderson or Jensen? Jensen can just think about giving us more power, and we have more power. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to tell her that? <laughs> no, that's too easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she might misinterpret more power means explosion. <laughs> We, I give you one faux power. That's the power of a supernova. I know. Oh. So, who are you asking to get more power, Chief Engineer? Uh, I'll say Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, get me more power. All right. So, uh, Anderson is going to be rolling me either a daring or a control engineering, a difficulty two. Warp core systems? Mm-hmm. That would apply. And then do we want to spend the momentum to possibly get more momentum? Sure. I'm fine with that. Gappin? We can attempt it, yes. And what's the ship rolling? Sorry. Uh, the ship does not roll for power management, actually. Mmm... All right, so uh, you get two momentum from that, and you regain immediately one power, and you can gain one more power for each momentum spent. Maybe just one. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Yep, I like it. All right, so you're back up to five power. Okay, so uh, before we uh, go to uh, the next round, uh, the Voth ship still has two back-to-back -back turns uh, because you guys are out of actions. So the first thing the Voth mothership is going to do is it's actually going to first uh, remodulate its shields, and then it's going to be doing a uh, evasive action. So let me roll for the remodulation first. Uh, it does, uh, which means it is uh, a bit harder to hit. Uh, well, if you hit it, it's got more resistance, I should say. And the next thing it's going to attempt is evasive action. And let's see how it does for that. Uh, no, it is uh, not evasive. So unfortunately, it spends even more power attempting all that. But uh, with its two actions out of the way, uh, we have a new round, which means I do get to roll for the effect die. Let's see if uh, Helix is able to do their job. Unfortunately, no. Helix is having a little bit of difficulty uh, getting a, a foothold. Uh, but as a fresh round, all of your actions are refreshed. So what would you guys like to do? Uh, let's put a defensive spin on our ship first, because if he hits us, it's going to hurt hard. Want well, to remodulate shields? Uh, yeah. Now, modulating shields is your tactical option. Ooh. But, I mean, we could do two, though. I mean... Well, I could do shields and... Engineering, connectivity, control. So right, but it it's a tactical slot, is oh, what he's right. saying. Yeah. So then, if we decide to shoot, it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but with our um, overrides, we can shoot from by spending whatever other system instead. Right. Yeah, I, I could do the engineering slot gets expended. Do the over uh, the modulate shield. Yeah, but we might. I mean, we might need to regain shields as well later. That's fair. Does Helix need to take an action? Uh, no. They are already okay, operating. She's in. Okay.
So it's either we lose the tactical or we lose the engineering. What are we, what are we doing? Uh, do the engineering. Yep. I will remodulate shields. Alrighty. So, uh, modulating shields is a power requirement of one. And you are doing a control security assisted by the ship's structure engineering. The difficulty is a two. Can I collaborate with him? What does collaborating do? Uh, collaborate security. Uh... I believe it means if you assist, there's some special benefits. Let me look. Yeah, like, well, I have collaborate security, so, I mean, he would be able to use my security score. But he has a good security score, right? Like, four? Uh, whenever an ally attempts a task using that discipline, you may spend one momentum to allow them to use your score for that discipline and one of your focuses. Oh. So it would be a momentum spend for him to do that. Otherwise, he has to use his score and his focuses. Uh, do you have a shield focus? What? Well, shipboard tactical systems. I mean, it covers this. Yeah. You want to spend you... a momentum, or do you want me to have an extra dice? Uh, it's up to you. I mean... Um, I'll take the extra dice. Okay. So again, uh, can he assist security? me, though? Uh, no, no assisting. No. Yeah. Right. Um, so control security for you and structure engineering for the ship, please. Difficulty two. Uh, let's see. Electroplasma system, I'm using... No, no, probably not. I can't say they're working. Mm -hmm. Warp mechanics, because I'm... Nah, nah, no, the problem no. is with shields. I, I tried. <laughs> yeah. Okay, two successes. Let's see what the ship rolls, see if it gets you any momentum. Uh, that the captain rolling that? Oop. Sorry, what am I rolling here? Uh, structure engineering. Structure. Sure. Come on, Captain. Alright, so uh, no momentum, but at the moment, the difficulty, uh, or no, your resistance is 7, I believe, because uh, you have 2 from evasive action and 1 from remodulating shields. So that is, uh, that is your action. Uh, the Vol Mothership uh, is going to spend its turn uh, regenerating some power. But it is now the uh, the player's turn again. Okay. Hmm. You know what? Let's take a shot. Yeah. Right. What are you? Uh, what are you shooting with? I believe you have your nukes, which are effective out to medium range. Uh, you could uh, fire your phase cannons at medium range. It would just be an increased difficulty. Yeah, I, th I think we found that like even medium range or pulse cannons were like the, st the same difficulty, and we didn't give you three. Well, you. So what? What that involves? I think that was an attack pattern you did. Um, because you have evasive up at the moment. Right, but we do have that advantage still from, uh, from Morris's... Right, but the phase we... cannons are still rated for close range, which means, uh, medium range is a plus one difficulty for it. Right. So it would be a difficulty three task to hit either with your phase cannons or your torpedoes. Right, yeah, yeah. So the phase cannons are probably best still. Mm -hmm. As long, while the other ship has shields, I think. Um, yep. Yeah, but the the torpedoes do way more breaches. Yeah, I mean. The other thing is that firing torpedoes does give me threat. Yeah, 
let's Mm-mm. you you know maybe maybe we shouldn't give him fifty threat no. this time. No, let's let's try to soften up their shields. Just use the cannons. Mm-hmm. Just in threat. case this we we have to go through a couple rounds. We're gonna try to tar- knock a couple things out if possible. With uh, enough threat to the GM, he calls in the Vol Fathership. Yeah. <laughs> much bigger and scarier. Yeah, face cannons. Okay. So control security for you, weapons security from the ship, difficulty three. Oh. And we don't have any momentum. Yes! Very nice. Thank you for the momentum. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is the god complex. Oh, all right. So you get uh, you still get one momentum. So yeah, go ahead and roll me uh, your challenge die damage for the face cannons. All right. So you have versatile one. Uh, what are you spending that momentum on? That to get rid of resistance, right? Yeah. Just because it's it's five, so we're gonna knock it down a little bit. Well, they remodulated and all that stuff too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's just to get rid of the resistant penetration. Is okay. That... So spending the bonus momentum on piercing uh, is enough that they do take some damage to their shields. Yay! Pew pew. Oops. Um, so, you know, uh, it's not enough to cause a breach, but, uh, you know, as you fire out with your phase cannons, you are unable to hit the thing and take down a little bit of their shields. Uh, however, on their turn, uh, they are going to try and create an advantage. So I'm going to roll for that first. Okay, so they do not create the advantage, uh, but I'm going to spend some threat for them to retain the initiative. And Ooh. then they are just going to open fire at you again. And miss completely. So, uh, it is now your guys' turn again. Suggestions? Grabbing uh, speed. I mean, we can always get closer and stay evasive. They're gonna get two more, sh- two more actions. They have one. They have one left. It right. seems like their their weapons are best at medium range. So why don't we use that to our advantage? Okay. Let's go ahead and move in closer. All right. Um, I'll do that. So let me do a. Well, they're already in medium range, so I don't need to spend any power to get us closer. But. Mm-hmm. I'd like to roll to grab us some advantage. Sure, yeah. So, go ahead and roll me a control, control con, con. And if someone can get engines con for the ship. Difficulty zero. Okay. All right, that's one success already. And two successes, so that's two momentum. And where would you like to move? Hmm. I like it. All right. And um, for fun, I mean, you might want I to think, stay evasive. I think. Oh, right, because you've already got. We've already used our tactical. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. And if you nail it, maybe you can buy the same advantage. Well, I was thinking, uh, I could, I could keep the initiative in fire. And then um, Rollins can use his collaboration security, so I so I can use his score instead of mine. All right, so it would be two momentum to keep the initiative, and then one momentum for him to be able to do that. And the difficulty for you firing would be a three. Why would it be a three? Because tactical has already acted, and you've already used your expanded connectivity this turn. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, that's a once per turn thing. Mm-hmm. Well, once per round thing, anyway. Okay, uh, well, in that case, I'll just, I think, evasive uh, maneuvers until we want to fire is a sound plan. 
All right, yeah. so you, that is a swift task, and that is going to be a daring con difficulty two, assisted by the ship's structure con. All right, and um, okay, I'm going to do that. Complication. Mm -hmm. All right, so I need to see a success from the ship here. This is difficulty one. Mm -hmm. uh, difficulty two, because you're doing a swift task. Oh, uh, I, I don't have. Uh, I have a talent that lets me keep the same no, difficulty. That was okay. Well, uh, structure con from the ship then. So this is for yeah. momentum. Do All right, so you get one momentum. Do you want to spend the two momentum you have to get rid of that complication? Um, I feel like it's better for us to have that momentum to spend. Um, the ship can handle it. Muth can repair whatever is dealt to it. Nah, let's. All right, I'll spend it. I'm, I'm doing my diligence. All right, well, we got one thing. more turn. It's uh, it's a good thing because had you not spent that, I was going to roll some challenge die to see how much power you took in this maneuver. Ooh. Uh -huh. But the good uh, news, we oh, sorry. should have spent one power though if we didn't already. Yep, I already I already took care of it. Um, so uh, for the Vol ship, uh, the Vol is going to do an attack pattern actually, uh, okay. which it does not succeed at because apparently its crew can't roll below a seventeen. And it is uh, your Morris. guys' turn again. Morris, did you get your untapped? I didn't buy any dice. Ah, okay. Just have to buy dice, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I believe uh, you have a sensors act and a command act. Mm. Ooh, scan for weakness. Yeah, let's go for a scan, scan for weakness. Alrighty, so that's going to be uh, Control Science. Uh, difficulty 1, assisted by the ship's sensors and security. Who's rolling for it? Uh, I would say uh, you're either Morris. Well, Morris is already gone, so I believe that would be uh, Shatoli. Okay. At least I'm pretty sure she's the... Yeah, she's the science. Uh, so yeah, uh, reason, uh, or no, control science for, uh, Shatoli, and sensor security from the ship, please. Okay, I already got the ship queued up. I can get Shatoli. Alright. Uh, sensor operations as a focus. Uh-huh. Very nice. So, uh, you actually get, uh, two momentum from that. And yeah, uh, just remember that your next attack against, uh, the vessel uh, gains the piercing two quality, and if you buy any bonus d20s for the attack, you add plus one challenge die for each two or for each uh, momentum or, you know what I'm trying to say. You you get extra challenge die if you buy dice. All right. All right. And uh, with that, uh, we have a new round. Uh, they will go first, but I do have to roll challenge die to see how well Helix is doing. And with that effect, that's all you need. So uh, the Vol Mothership immediately powers down uh, its engines, its shields, pretty much everything. And it's hailing you guys. Uh, Strauss looks at the captain and is like, on screen, sir? Oh, yes, please, on screen. So appearing on screen is a uh, empty corridor, uh, dimly lit, uh, flickering lights. And uh, Helix has superimposed her avatar uh, in the corridor and says, I have taken control of the ship, sir. Uh, it does not appear that there's any life signs here, at least none that I'm detecting. Actually, I take that back. There is a biological substance of some sort, but... Hmm. You may wish to come over and scan it yourselves. The internal sensors on this thing are not very uh, robust. Very well. Go ahead and get a OA team together. All right. 
And it is here that we are going to take our 10 minute break so you guys can decide what to do from here. So yeah, BRB in about 10 minutes.
All right, and we are back. All right, so uh, with the Vol ship uh, assuredly in your control, uh, you are sending over an away team, yes? Yes. All right, who is going to be on the away team? Well, I would say uh, this is uh, this is <clears throat> Enterprise era, so the captain always goes. Okay, captain's going. Anyone else? Uh, Moose will be going. Uh, how much is it for the Mako armor? I believe it's an opportunity cost of two. Mm. Looks at the amount of momentum we have. <laughs> is that is that Mako armor for everybody? Yep. No. Uh, I mean. Ideally, we'd want the doctor to go to do some doctor scans. Yeah, unfortunately, it's he's some not kind here, of bio. So. Yeah. I mean, Does I... anyone have a good medical supporting character? I do not. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think medical is where we're lacking in the supporting characters at the moment. I might make one before next game, but. Sure. Um, I've got the tractor beam specialist who's a Vulcan security officer. We also have... Oh my god. Arnold has a three in medicine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can do the scan. Ah. I, I think say... that's just so he can say, it's not a tumor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say whoever plays Arnold has to do the voice. That's the you only can rule. You can play him. <laughs> Well, I'm, I mean, if if both Moose and the captain are going down, I might not. Like, I might just send a security detachment. Because they said no life signs, right? Mm-hmm. Or at least there's be... not, like, humanoid life signs. Right, there's some bio gunk. Well, be vampires. Sec security officer Tovic agrees that it would be logical to go as uh, if there is not a security officer presence. All right, so Tovik will go as well. And, I mean, yeah, I would also want Arnold. <laughs> All right. For his hugeness. Uh, if, if you check um, Morris's, like, flight, lo flight log notes, you'll notice that um, all of his best performance tests have been when um, Arnold and... Um, Moose were standing on opposite sides of the ship to balance it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like their security fitness is less than my security fitness. I just want to. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, eleven five. Ah, you have one more than them. Yeah, mine's uh, bigger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my next question, now that I've got the token set up, are you going over via shuttle, or are you beaming over? Yeah, the captain doesn't beam unless he absolutely has to. Okay. All right. Moose and Arnold will beam ahead, if that's okay with the captain. I have no problem with that. Like, we'll time it so we beam in just as they're docking. Okay. Uh, to, like, you know... Give everyone just anything a surprise, just in case. All right. Uh, but we're definitely taking the Mako suits. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, without doing a roll for the transporters, I'll say if you just give me your uh, your remaining momentum, that'll happen. And yeah, let me uh, change scenes. Do, 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 do. So yeah, uh, as you all beam in or dock and enter the facility, uh, what strikes you immediately is that the air is very stale, almost as if it hasn't been recycled or otherwise messed with uh, in quite a while. Uh, the corridors seem oversized, uh, almost as if designed for someone two or three times a uh, human size. Um, but probably what strikes you as the most is you look down the corridor and you see glowing, flickering lights, and your first in instinct might be, oh, there's, there's a fire, or oh, there's some sort of power signature. Uh, but as you get a little bit closer and start to, you know, see it with more of your eye, uh, you see that it's actually bioluminescent, almost like flesh that's glowing, uh, growing uh, out of the walls. 
Is this a... Is this a living ship? It looks like a tumor. Jesus. <laughs> can we do can we do a scan of those uh, the biomatter <laughs> growing out of the can. walls? All right, Mr. Arnold, uh, you're going to be rolling me a uh, reason and a medicine, please. Uh, difficulty two. Uh, emergency medicine? Nah, unfortunately not. can do it, I believe in you. And I thought human vessels smelled bad. Hey, you get a momentum. Alright, uh, so Arnold, what you, uh, you find out is that, uh, well, you found your missing crewman. Oh! The readings appear to be Vulcan! Ah! <laughs> so, I, I'm, are they splattered? Oh, I thought you said they were growing out of. Yep. They're indeed growing. It's almost like uh, if someone took uh, some sort of biomass and coated the corridors with it, and then it just sort of grew out from there. That's whatever. Nasty. Whatever would be the purpose to do such a thing. That, that's nasty could be a way for them to adapt a change to their ship you know change your ship from being mechanical to organic it could heal As... but they have to use organic of somebody else potentially inefficient it would be much more efficient to grow your own biomatter I have a creepy idea of what we're standing in I'm thinking whatever is doing this is an automated reaction. The crew don't seem to be here. If this was a fully automated ship, why are there corridors? I'm... It's a pure spitball idea, but I'm thinking this is just a program that's acting with no one to guide it, and it's trying to do what it can. Almost as if to confirm your suspicion, uh, a speaker above you uh, in Helix's voice says, That is, it does line up with what I'm seeing. There are no really advanced forms of artificial intelligence here. This does appear to be a derelict ship running on automation. Uh, interestingly, it does appear to have a repair program, and that is what has been activated. It is trying to replace parts by whatever means necessary. Yeah, so we don't write a book. <laughs> so we find are we not detecting any intact life forms other than ourselves? That is correct. So this is a murder ship. Oh. It runs around, gets people, and uses them as raw resources. I believe the town's a ghost ship. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I don't like this particular ship. I just want the R R to echo through the hallway. Oh, it does. It goes ah <laughs> ah ah. <laughs> Any recommendations what we should do with this ship, gentlemen? Well, clearly this ship has self-preservation, or at least its artificial intelligence does. Um, Helix. If this ship were fully operational, do you know what its uh, directives and programming would send it to do? No. So far, that's... everything it's done appears to have been in efforts to repair itself. Indeed, and that's part of the problem uh, and why it actually was so easy for me to gain access was there has been some sort of damage to the main computer core of the vessel most of the log entries and most of the programming has reverted to a very basic functionality. Uh, the good news is I do have a new set of coordinates if we wish to follow those. 
Let's repair the breach to the structure aboard the Avenger first. I can have Mr. Anderson do that. I want to take a look at this computer core. With your permission, Captain. Yes, please, because I'm very tempted to uh, make the ship go away once we're done getting everything we want off of it. Very well. And, um... Uh, Reinhardt's going to message um, Jensen. Mm -hmm. Jensen, uh, have Anderson start the repairs on the Avenger. You and a couple of others, though, I want you guys to do detailed analysis and scans of the ship, weapon system, propulsions, everything. Of course, sir. We'll get on it. And then, yeah, he'll... Looks around like Helix. Can you make a path to the computer core? If you will follow the glowing lights, and yeah, lights uh, flicker on, and it's sort of a green blinking light that shows you the way to go. He'll stow away his face pistol and head on down. All right. So can Helix? Can Helix stop the repair action or repair actions? Yeah. To any major know, systems? She she could disable that no problem. Okay. So any of the weapons and engines we want to just. Make sure this thing stays in place. It doesn't just take off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, my question is, is everybody going with Moose? Or do people, you know, head back to the ship kind of a thing? No, I'm going to go back to the ship. He he can handle it from here. Okay. So the captain's... Captain, oh, go ahead. if you will, my, my job is to protect you. Um, if you are returning back to the ship, uh, I would... Once, once we have done so, I would like to uh, rejoin the crew via transporter. Or re rejoin the away team via transporter. At your discretion, Mr. Tobek. Understood, Captain. All right. So that all happens, you know. The captain goes back. Tobek beams back to the security people, and yeah, uh, the three of you uh, follow the green illuminated lights, uh, and eventually you come to a corridor which is just biomass. Uh, everywhere uh, it's on the floor it's on the ceilings uh there is a way to move through the biomass there's like a very narrow corridor but unfortunately it seems that if you want to proceed you have to go through this so as we're walking down there i'm looking to arnold and i'm just like yeah so when i rematerialized my my right leg wasn't there i was like oh that sounds um... like a silly story it's not logical I don't have a right leg anymore. What can you explain that? Huh? Uh, we have to go through this, don't we? It would appear so. Well, as you always like to say, for your people, it's a logical path. Let's go through, and he's going to squeeze through. All right, and it is the most disgusting sensation as you start to push through. It's it's almost like uh, when you like make a fist with your hand, and then you try to like poke a finger through uh, your clenched fist. It, there's just resistance to the walls. It's warm. It's wet. It's just is disgusting all around. And uh, this goes on for maybe about two or three minutes. And maybe you start to worry that there is no end to this thing. And that you have just jumped down the throat of some horrible thing. Uh, but eventually you do see the quote-unquote light at the end of the corridor. And uh, you emerge uh, into a room... Uh, again, full of biomass. In fact, everything is just coated with this warm, pulsating, fleshy substance. And uh, in the middle of this room is a large cylindrical object, uh, which has tendrils of biomass hanging off of it. And uh, Helix says through a muffled speaker, this is what remains of the computer core. Helix, is there a breach that uh, the growth is covering? Yes, if you will look to your right, uh, there is a large amount of biomass that extends all the way out to the hull. That uh, takes away that idea. Alright, let's look at this computer. And he pulls out his tricorder and has to find an access point. Alright, uh, roll me a uh, reason engineering, please. Difficulty 2. Reason engineering... Experimental computer technology as a focus? Mm, nah, this isn't exactly experimental. That's flesh and tech combined. 
Okay. <laughs> I tried. But I got the two. Got the two. Uh, yeah. Uh, strangely enough, or maybe because Helix has anticipated this, you are able to gain remote access when you start trying to scan and find a way in. And yeah, you're seeing much what Helix has already reported. Uh, the computers are very badly damaged. Uh, most of the processing power and most of the um, data storage units have been corrupted or otherwise destroyed. Uh, what information you are able to get is, again, a set of coordinates. I'm going to pull the coordinates, and I want to try and pull some of these corrupted drives, if I can. Okay. Uh, it would involve more or less sticking your hand into flesh. <laughs> oh, not the weirdest thing I've done in my youth. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, you reach through, and it's, again, the most... Eh, you know, you get shudders just thinking about it kind of a thing. But, yeah, you're able to pull out what are basically uh, hard drive shaped and hard drive size uh, data storage units. And they are just dripping wet. I'm just going to hand them to Tovac. There you go. Necrotic Klinga, or Necrotic Vulcan. Mm. Uh, is this all Vulcan flesh? <laughs> That's the weirdest way to say that. Uh, no, Arnold is detecting that uh, there's presence of Vulcan, there's some humans, there's some Endorian, there's some things that he has no DNA to compare to. Arnold, if you could get a deep scan of all the different DNAs you're picking up, we can identify and let the families know that um, what happened. At least give them some closure. Will do. Alright. Well, that's all I want to do in here. Let's uh, squeeze on through. Right. Do we know the purpose of these coordinates? Is it uh, another no, they are trap completely laid by unknown. the ship? Hmm. Um, he looks. Yes. Is this the same technology aboard the Vulcan ship that augmented and gave them weapons? I am seeing enough similarities to indicate as such, yes. Alright. Uh, Moose to Captain. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Despite the horrible attempted repairs, I think we should give Starfleet the coordinates of this ship. Have them send out a tow ship or have the Vulcans send out an exploratory ship. There is technology they most definitely want to look at. Can a fragment of... Well, since... Ne er, Helix is an AI. Could we not leave a fragment to fly? Oh, it's repair the engines and fly it back. I'd rather not have it just fly off by itself, just in case another program kicks in and it starts its process all over again. I will conflat our contact Starfleet and confirm this is what they want to do before. Hey, Obviously, they'll they'll send somebody if they concur. Well, we can hide it in the nebula. You could. Uh, we're on our way back with some uh, corrupted data cores. Hopefully, we can get some more information out of them. Elix, uh, do you think this ship will be fine if you transfer back? It will if I erase the higher functions of the computer. Captain, do you agree with that assessment? Yes. Right. Go ahead, Helix. Do what you need to do. All right. So, uh, I guess the last scene we'll have before we call the session to a close is, uh, Captain on the bridge, you're radioing which Starfleet? Are you radioing the, uh, the Vulcan uh, Admiral that talked to you before, or are you calling Archer, maybe? No, I'm going to call I'm gonna call Vulcan Admiral that gave us this mission. Okay. Uh, I looked up his name because I forgot to give it to you earlier. Uh, his name is Stav. Uh, S-T-A-U-V, Stav. And, uh, yeah, uh, Admiral Stav comes on the screen and says, Captain, I trust you have 
Good news for me. Admiral, we found a large vessel that was running a a semi-intelligent rogue AI, uh, rogue computer program, and uh, it, it seems that this vessel captured or maybe even killed your crew and is now using it for raw resources as well as several other races. We have disabled the vessel and it is uh, standing by for either inspection or destruction depending on what you would prefer. We will send out a survey team to make that further assessment. Good work, Captain. Uh, have you found any leads as to where this thing might have come from? Yes, we have additional coordinates that are were stored in the computer core. Uh, we are going to attempt to pull out more information out of the core before we commit to those coordinates. So we have try to see if we have a better idea as to what we'll be walking into if we were to follow up. If um, see maybe where this home location is for these vessels and see if it's the only one. Very well, that seems the most logical course of action. Uh, proceed at your own discretion, Captain. Very well, sir. Admiral out. And yeah, I think that's where we will end today's session. So, uh, players stick around for a little bit, but to anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, thank you so much, and we will see these guys in two weeks. Bye-bye.